right before we jump into this video, if you haven't signed up for my email list, just look for this orange box over on my website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, Frono's photo. Dot com. And before the end of this video, I'm going to tell you why I got yelled at for being on the stage at the Gavin DeGraw concert that I shot not too long ago. Now, what is this video about? It's about showing you the keeper images and the stories behind the images and what I think makes certain ones good and certain ones not so good. If you would like to download these full res images, you can download them over on the website and I will put up some raw files for you guys to personally play with. So. I got in contact with Gavin a long time ago. It's a pretty cool story. Uh, I started interacting with somebody on Twitter who had maybe 80,000 followers on Twitter and they were on tour a lot. And I became friends with them just by interacting, just by conversing, answering whatever questions they put out via tweets, whatever it was. But I made, I got on their radar. And then finally we became friends all through the internet, all through Twitter. And I asked, <coughs> excuse me, I asked if there was anybody he could connect me with that would like to have a photo story done. He's like, you know, I, I'm on tour with Gavin. I think he'd love to do it. We set it up. I spent a couple hours at a show with Gavin behind the scenes getting photos and bam, every time he comes into town, I can now go shoot. And that's exactly what I did here. So a lot of this is about me just going out for the day and shooting, actually for a couple of hours, like nine o'clock till 11 o'clock, you know, shooting the whole show. Not really the, the, the full day in the life, but going out and shooting a show because it's only three blocks down the street from here. When I was backstage and Gavin just got there, uh, we were actually gonna do sh uh, shoot a shoot beforehand, but he wasn't feeling well, so he just got there a little later. And this family came backstage and somebody was taking a, a, a shot with their iPhone or their cell phone and I knew it wasn't gonna turn out because it was dark. Look, I'm at 16,000 ISO to get this photo. So I'm like, look, I got this, guys. I went ahead, I took the picture. The guy in the image, they have a foundation for the two little cute boys here. And he's like, could you send me that photo? Got his card as soon as I got home, edited the photo, sent it right out to him. You never know when that is gonna go somewhere. And, and I didn't do it for it to go somewhere. I did it because I knew the photo wasn't gonna turn out and I might as well take it. And I just stepped in. I didn't wait for anybody to ask. I just said, I got it. And I took it and I sent it to them and they loved it. Now these two kids were awesome. When I was, they, they came up and I think, I think they're both deaf also on top of, I think they have Down syndrome and they're both deaf. And they were looking, the one was looking at me, he's like, pointing up at my hair. So I just went like this so that he could touch my hair. He touched my hair, we communicated a little bit. After I took the pictures, he, he came over and he's like, basically was wanted to see it and I showed it to him and we interacted that way. It was, it was kind of cool. So we'll move on to the next. I just did that out of nowhere. So Gavin was getting ready to go up on stage. Uh, I'm at 25,600. Um, is the photo any good? Not really. Uh, I was hoping that he would step further up into the light and it could be cooler. It's a little distracting with the stuff in the background, so not so much a fan of it. This is fine. He's walking towards me. There's a video guy right behind him, as you can see, uh, taking the picture, uh, taking video. This is 25,600 also. Um, it's okay. I was going for something. It's, it works. It's not my favorite. Moving on, I like to say don't forget about the crew. You can't forget about the crew on the stage because they're part of the show, and these types of images will go a long way for a crew member because not everybody photographs guys in the crew. I will tell you, one of the best ways to get in with a band is to get in with the crew. Respect the crew, that's, a, that's what my buddy the merch dude always has to say. Or love the band, respect the crew, love the band, something like that. Um, but you, what you have to remember about these, these guys on the road is they work with so many different bands. They also have so many different friends on the road who do the same thing that they do. It's a community, uh, it's a community on the road. So one person knows another person who knows another person so that when they end up on another tour and somebody's like, hey, you should have this guy come photograph out in Philly or out on the road, they remember you and they call you because you, you took these photos that they end up loving. So, you know, got some behind the scenes stuff. Then Gavin was out there. I like to shoot Gavin from behind so I can get the entire state, uh, in, the entire uh, venue in there with the fans. 
there was no opportunity for me to do that where we were here because I couldn't sneak behind the risers. I couldn't sneak behind the lights. There was no room, so I was just SOL. It's an all right snapshot. But here we just had a guitar change. You can see that um, Billy's putting the guitar on and the guy's grabbing the guitar to come off stage. Love the color. Billy just playing there. Then this, these two, I have this. Which do you guys like better? Taking the guitar off or moving towards the guy who's ready to catch it? Uh, I mean, we have the streak, the streak of light, and then we have this. I like it coming over his head because you can see that he's getting ready to give it to him. But what do you guys think? Also, I just noticed we have a Gavin DeGraw sticker up in there. That's another little added bonus. The lights were pretty harsh, uh, as, as in extremely bright. Um, and I'll show you this. this. This doesn't work too well in color because, look, it's so blue, and it's not really good. But when you go black and white, you can kind of save it and do something with it. And I say that often about saving it. Uh, I didn't like that shot so much. It's just sharp. <laughs> I used what I used. I was using a 24 to 70. It's just a sharp image that I liked. The color is not much I could do with it. Just a, an interesting shot of Gavin in front of the stage. Not the best either. All right. That's okay. It's all right. Cut his knee off. Not ideal for what I like to do, but it is what it is. Then I had an opportunity to shoot the drummer. I want to shoot everybody in the band. <coughs> Excuse me. And there were some cool lights, so got some nice shots of him just packed out on the side of the stage. Oh, let me just tell you this. Before the show, I went up to Gavin right before he went up, and I'm like, um, actually, this was while the show was starting, right before he went on. And I'm like, do you mind if I stay up here on the side of the stage? And the tour manager was like, ah. And Gavin's like, bro, you can shoot from wherever you want. Go wherever you want to go. Um, and with that, there's a lot of uh, trust there that he knows that I'm gonna get great shots and he trusts that I'm going to do the right thing. Saying I can go wherever I wanna go means I can go on stage. And I wanted to, I was looking for my opportunity to bounce out to the middle to get the shots, but it ended up where I, I couldn't. So I wasn't gonna disrespect him or the other artists by walking in front of them and becoming you know, the center of attention because that's not my job there. I'm supposed to get images. But if the opportunity arose, I was gonna take it. So just some cool shots of the drummer, moving through those, wider shot, then bam. Look at all the silver in this one. I mean, just look how, look how silver-tastic it is with the black and white. It shines quite a bit. In terms of color, oops, I'm not in the right module. In terms of color, not any good in color. It's just a snapshot. Black and white, I think it pops quite a bit. Moving on, Gavin posted this on his uh, Instagram. He liked it. Um, you get these bright ass lights. If you were to try and shoot with aperture priority, this is what your shot would look like. If you relied on the camera to give you the exposure, I guarantee that's what it would have looked like, not this. Uh, people all day get on my ISO and say, hey, why do you shoot so high? Uh, let me explain to you. This was at 2000 because it was super bright, but I spent most of the show shooting at 4000 uh, and I ride the shutter speed because that is the easiest thing for me to sit there and tweak back and forth while I'm shooting, knowing that there's nothing wrong at 4,000 ISO. So what if I'm at 1 320th of a second, or 1 3200th of a second at F uh, 3.2 in this case at 2,000 ISO? So, so what if I'm super fast? Yes, I'm well aware that I could drop my, shut my ISO to 800. And because I dropped it to 800 a couple of stops, my shutter speed would come straight down. But... That is good if it's super bright and it stays consistent. Where people run into issues with that is what happens when the lights get lower and I'm already at 4,000 and all I need to do is dial back down my shutter speed to compensate for the loss of light. I rather compensate with the loss of light by going down with the shutter speed but still have it be fast enough so that it's gonna capture motion. Whereas if I was a couple of subs lower, let's see, we're at two, we're, let's say we were at, uh, we go down to 800 ISO. We've got 1,000, we've got 800, it's, it's another stop. I'm still at 12 something ISO, uh, 12 something -th of a second shutter speed. That's not bad, but in those extreme situations where you, you're at 500th of a second at 4,000 ISO, and then the lights change, you still can be at 250th or, or 320th and, or around there and still get a solid image. Um, moving on, another cool drummer shot. Sometimes in the, in the, in the, in the pit, this is a tough pit to shoot in because there's not a lot of space, but I thought that would be okay. Not a great shot. Needed some shots of this guy in the band, so I got it. Um, more of Gavin. These shots, they're not very good because of the angle and how low I am. They're all right. They're not the best. 
I like this because there's some interaction between the two of them. I make sure I get high enough above the stage so that I can not have the stage in the image. There's some pictures, let's see if we can find one real fast, where, where I have the front of the stage. Yeah, I'm shooting quite a bit here. Let me go back a little bit because I just want to show you what happens if you have too much of the stage in there. No, I'd be in front of the stage at this point. You see, I don't know if you can tell. This is not a good example. I'm doing a terrible job. Let me go through the images this way and see if I can find it. I apologize for using your time. Because there were a couple of shots that I tried to get, um, and I noticed that I didn't want to block the people behind me, but I knew I needed to get the photo. I can't really find one right now. I'm looking for it. Oh well. Oh well. I don't see it. Sorry. Taking your time. Let's keep moving here. Okay, so then at the end of the show, I figure they're going to do some kind of bow. They're going to get together. So I get up on stage, on the side of the stage, and they do this. All right, so you can see how, how was I going to get here to get to the center portion where there's an open space if the riser is up here and all of that other stuff. There was no way. But I figured if they went to the front of the stage, all the attention is going to be on them. I'm going to walk in front of this now because the guitar player is not out here. I'm not going to distract him. They're all at the front of the stage, and then I can get straight from behind. Now that I'm straight from behind, all of the attention is not on me. It's on the band. And I needed this shot. I needed to get something different than everybody else. Not that there were, you know, nobody else was shooting when I was shooting because they all shot the first three songs. But you can see I had to choose between what lens. What, I was going to take 11 to 24 because I didn't bring my bag, or was I going to use the 24 to 70? I knew that the 24 to 70 was going to give me a better option, that the 14 to 24 would be way too wide. Okay. So I get this shot, I like it, he's curtsying, boom. I like this better because look at the two spotlights. The two spotlights are like, bam, I'm the man, you have the rest of the band in there, you have the fans cheering, you have his piano, which is key, and that's what I like about this shot. Some people call me a space cowboy, no. Some people will say that this microphone stand is in the way. Well, yeah, the microphone stand is in the damn way. But what was I gonna do, go kick it out of the way? It's part of the shot, it was there, I don't think it detracts from it. Moving on to the next one. So, then you have the band that does this. I think that the black and white is more powerful. What do you think? Color, black and white, you tell me. So this is the black and white. I think it's more classic. Um, they're both good. I mean, I guess it depends on the day of the week that you look at it, but I love the black and white. It's the entire band, they're all there. Everything in this image looks great to me, including the editing. Pat myself on the back, what do you guys think? Then Gavin just stayed up after the rest of the band left and did another a cappella song. And so I just knew that the focus was on him, but I stayed. I wasn't going to leave the stage because I, ha I wanted the shot. I love the fact that the lens flare is coming out from behind him. This also shows you how amazing the new 24-70 to 2.8 is in, he in handling flare. I shot this this way with the flare in mind. I wanted to get the flare because, you see, this isn't as powerful as this with that flare. It just isn't. Um, and again, shooting everything manual, so I'm controlling the settings. But that's not as powerful as this. So that's why I shot. Um, I went knowing I wanted to get some lens flare in it. Boom. Yeah. He was like pumping his fist, and then I got the shot, not sure color, black and white, which one's better. And then this as a final shot that I liked is he's resting, laying down the microphone for the rest of the show. You have the entire, cr you have everybody here. You have everybody. You have the two spotlights, top corners. You have the chandeliers that make the film more famous. You have all of these people here. All eyes are on Gavin, except there's probably some eyes on me. I would love to find some. Let's see, anybody looking at me? Anybody looking at me? Anybody looking at me? Nobody's looking, which is good. So I went there, got that shot that I needed, and then at the end, after the show, Gavin went down a long line of people waiting, took selfies with them, and went and had their pictures taken. So this is one of those things. I love to go shoot and spent a couple hours. We hung out after the show. Gavin came back here, played my piano for a minute. Then we went to a bar, had a quick drink. They checked out to go to the hotel, and I stayed here and started to edit images. Um, the reason I didn't film any of this is I was focused on shooting. You know, we ha I have to keep shooting 
uh, a lot of people sometimes think I don't really shoot, but I do shoot. I'm very selective with what I shoot. And this is what I did. And so I'm still sharing you with you these images so you can download and play with them. But just to give you some mindset about what I'm going through when I'm doing the shoot. And I can't forget to tell you that I, all, that I got yelled at for being on the stage. For whatever reason, when Gavin was doing this last picture where he's in the, uh, in the, uh, in the crowd getting uh, selfies and stuff and signing autographs, one second. So when he was signing autographs, I went back up on stage to get some shots and the crew was up there breaking it down, the local road crew. And I get a tap on my shoulder going, what are you doing here? You can't be here. You don't belong here. And I'm like, Exc excuse me? Like, you know, you, you know better than to be on stage. I'm like, what are you talking about? I've been on stage the whole show. And the guy's like, no, you haven't. And I was just like, uh, okay. So actually, I don't think I did that right there. But I walked off stage. I was like, all right. And then I get off stage. And then I guess this guy's assistant decided she wanted to lay into me and look at me with evil eyes and say, you know better than that. And I wasn't just going to stand there and get yelled at for no reason. And, it, and, and, and I just said, no better than what? Like what? What are, you, what are you yelling at me for? Can we talk about it diplomatically? Because I didn't do anything wrong. The artist said I could go wherever I want. Now, in the future, I could totally just go to the stage manager guy and be like, hey, or the tour manager go, yeah, Jared's approved, which he did do beforehand. He went to them and said, Jared's going to be shooting the entire show. So uh, let's cut it short a little bit. I'm sitting on a sofa waiting for Gavin and the rest of the guys to finish up. The, the, the stage manager comes back out and goes, uh, if you ever want to be on my stage, you, have to ask, you must ask me first. I'm like, that, that's fine, but I was up there the entire show. And he goes, no, you weren't. And I'm like, would you like to see the pictures? He's like, you know better than to do this. I'm like, I, I, I don't want to argue with you. I just want to do this diplomatically and just say, I understand you want permission to be on your stage, but I had permission and I was up there the whole show. So here's the pictures of me up on stage at the very first song. So whatever, there was a disconnect somewhere um, and we left it at that. I'll be going back, I'm sure, and I'm sure they'll have eyes on me. And the last thing I want to have happen is I go over and then ask for permission and then be like, no, you can't and blah, blah, blah for, for some bullshit reason. Um, but what, whatever, it is what it is. Um, I enjoyed the shoot, really appreciate Gavin taking the time, allowing me to shoot from wherever I want, saying, bro, do whatever you want, go wherever you want to go. And I like shooting. So that's it. That's the story behind those images. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube and hit that bell button now. Don't forget that bell button's there. After you hit subscribe, that bell lets you get notified when a video goes live. So in case you've been missing them, you'll never miss another. That's it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Oh, if you would like, uh, okay, I'll do that at the beginning. I'll sign off now. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.